Hello, high school football fans, and welcome to Egger Stadium on the banks of Town Creek in Van Wert, Ohio. It's WBL Western Buckeye League football between the St. Mary's Rough Riders and the Van Wert Cougars. It's a little wet out there. I'm Dave Bowen. I'm and doing color commentary tonight will be Josiah Stober. We've got St. Mary's coming in with an overall record of 3-2, and 2-2 two, two and two in the WBL, and Van were one and four, oh and four in league play. It's the run from St. Mary's versus the spread offense from Van Wert. Josiah Stober, it's going to be a challenge with these weather conditions for that spread offense. Yeah, absolutely. You know, a team that really relies on those big plays, you know, as you said, in that spread offense, trying to, we'll, we'll try to spread out this St. Mary's defense. And, you know, as you said, in this weather, though, for St. Mary's, nothing's probably going to change. You know, a team that's going to run the ball, they're going to keep running the ball, try to run right at this Van Wert defense. So, as you said, the floor out here tonight and they're ready to go and a keys to the game from Van Wert coach uh, Keith Recker it's his 13th season he shared that they have to win the turnover battle uh, Van Wert currently is last in the WBL in that category as we see there's some wind as well as the ball falls off the tee they got a tackle they got to stay in their lanes on the defensive line and be great on first down defensively for St. Mary's, they got to win the special teams, own the line of scrimmage on both offense and defense, and throw, throttle that Van Wert offense. No big plays. Kicking off for Van Wert is Griffin McCracken. The ball falls off the tee again. That will allow us to get our presenting sponsor in. We appreciate Wapakoneta Ford, who is our presenting sponsor. Wapakoneta Ford. View our new and pre-owned inventory at wapakonetaford.net or visit us at 613 North Dixie Highway in Wapakoneta. So we're going to have Noah, or excuse me, Keaton Welch is going to keep that ball from blowing over. The wind is coming from the east, and Griff McCracken's kickoff goes down to number four. That's Trey Moore. He picks it up at his nine-yard line, finds a seam, and he gets up to the 25-yard line where it'll be first and ten St. Mary's. Uh, Trey Moore allowing that ball to bounce in front of him, was able to pick it up and get a good game to start this Rough Riders defense, or offense. So on the 25-yard line, first and 10 for the Rough Riders. If you have not seen St. Mary's play, you are going to see a heavy dose of run out of the wing tee. It's old-fashioned football. Again, back from the day from my partner when he played at Spencerville, they ran <laughs> the ball successfully. Here we go. And right away they go up the middle. There's a hole for Mabry. And he breaks it to his left. And he's going to go down the sideline. And he is pushed out of bounds by Van Wert's Donovan Winklejohn. But he picks up a huge gain right there. And that's a Lodix Jewelry first down. Our Lodic Jewelry, your family owned to operate jeweler for over 70 years, is sponsoring our first downs tonight and a great play to start off for this Rough Riders team able to find that gap on the left side and a great game. He goes to the Van Wert 40. That's a 35 yard gain on first down. The defensive line for Van Wert's got to stiffen up and it does so right there. Mabry with the carry again. Mabry first back in action after uh, working through a concussion last week against OG, a victory for St. Mary's 21 to 19. It's gonna be second down and eight on the Van Wert 38 yard line. And St. Mary's missed that option, having Colton Mabry there in the backfield, as you said, for that concussion injury. But here they go once again. You gotta play disciplined football on the defensive line. This time it's Schmidt with the football, nicely stuck there by Van Wert. They meet him at the line of scrimmage, a host of Cougars. It's a student council meeting at the 36-yard line. Make it the 37. Gain of one, and this is exactly what Keith Recker wanted to see his team do. Yeah, they gave up the big play on first down initially, but now they have St. Mary's where they don't like to be third and long. Yeah, and St. Mary's not a team that likes to throw the ball, so if they can get them in these long third down possessions here, We'll see what St. Mary's comes does out of the play. Mabry takes it to the right side. He's got the edge, and he makes it around for enough for a first down, but we've got laundry on the field, Josiah. Yeah, it looks like we've got a hold there on one of the receivers out there holding 
Not sure which one was held, but it will be brought back now. St. Mary's will now have a long third down. And this is a good time to introduce our officiating crew. Our referee is William Horvath. Anthony DeRose is our umpire. Barry McCullough, our line judge. Vince Ozier, side judge. And Steve Jones is our back judge. You see that a lot when you're going around the edge. On the end, that's where that holding occurs. That's what officials are taught to look for on that type of play. And it comes to fruition right there. It's going to be third down now and a long 18 for the Rough Riders. Uh, this is the spot that St. Mary's does not like to be on. And a great defensive stop there by the Cougars as two defenders meet him on the catch and knocks him down. Jacob Kessler does complete the pass to Mabry, but no gain on the play, makes it fourth down. St. Mary's is going to come in and punt, and if you're a Van Wert fan, you've got to be real happy with how your defense stiffened up there. And that was number 30, Aaron Reichert was there first to make contact on the running back for St. Mary's, and St. Mary's is back to punt. Punting is Bradley Trip Triplett, and he gets a low one away. Van Wert's getting away from that football, and it's going to trickle down to the 26-yard line, and it'll be first and 10 Cougars from their own 26. They'll start this drive with 9.27 to go on their own 26-yard line. So that was a 21-yard punt for Triplett. And now you're going to see this spread offense for Van Wert. Conditions, as we said in the pregame, not conducive. Briston Wise. Brings it to his left. He's the leading rusher in the WBL. We see it on display right here. Goes around the left side of that offensive line, and he takes it all the way into St. Mary's territory. And it's going to be on the St. Mary's 43-yard line. As you said, Briston Wise comes in leading the league and rushing at the quarterback position. Took number 14, Jacob Kessler, to knock him out of bounds. Great run there by the Cougars. That's a... 31-yard run. Vanwert stays with the hurry-up offense. Picks up positive yardage on first down. That was Gary Hillary, I believe. No, Bristol Wise kept the ball on that one as well. So he gets positive yardage, make it second and five. So he's on the 38-yard 38-ish yard line of St. Mary's. Two great drives or two great plays right away for Van Wert. Wise takes a snap. They go with the fake handoff. Wise comes to the right, and he's able to get around the edge. So early on, we're seeing the speed of Van Wert and Briston Wise show itself, able to get around the edge there. That's a first down for Van Wert. Yeah, another Laudick first down. As you see, it's all it's been Briston Wise, you know, faking that handoff, forcing this St. Mary's defense to decide who are they going to stop. And so far, he's made the right call, positive yardage on these first three plays. And whereas we saw St. Mary's have a holding penalty when um, their quarterback, Jacob Kessler, went around the edge, this time Van Wert does it successfully. Another straight carry for Briston Wise. And he gets the ball now down to around the 28-yard line, a pickup of a solid two yards. And for the St. Mary's defense, you know, coming out early, well, this Cougars, everything's been Briston Wise setting up that, that big play, you know, sucking that defense close to the line. We'll see if they just try to go over the top here shortly. I think Van Wert, the coaching staff, said, guys, we're going to still show our spread offense, but with these weather conditions, we got to establish a run. They're doing it here early on. But right there is the defense for St. Mary's. Owen Ott with the stop behind the line of scrimmage as they weren't fooled that time. A steady dose of Briston Wise, that's been the recipe. St. Mary's figures it out on that play. Yeah, Owen Ott able to get around the outside and was right there on that, that fake. Saw that Briston Wise held on to the ball and was able to make the quick tackle, bring him down in the backfield. 
probably in four down territory here, Josiah. Um, but you want to pick up some positive yardage to make for fourth down manage manageable if you don't get the first down. Wise pitches to Micah Cowan. He goes around the left side. He's looking at that first down yard marker, and I think he got it. Tackled by number 42 for St. Mary's. Ryan Revolt, 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 that's number 48, I take that back. We're looking through the pane glass with the raindrops on it, but I'm not complaining because we're nice and dry <laughs> in this beautiful new press box here at Egger Stadium. That's right, a great call there to get Mike Cohen on the outside using that speed. And then that is another Laudick first down. Weiss keeps it, maybe picks up a yard on the seventh play of the drive. Down on the 18-yard line in the red zone. And our red zone sponsor is Thermal Guard Window and Door. Quality windows and doors from a local company you can trust. Visit thermoguardwindows.com or call 419-229-4273 for your free estimate. Second and nine. Hillary beside Wise, lead blocker. Nice penetration from the left edge by number 80, Cameron Dammeyer. He's the leading tackler for St. Mary's. 45 tackles coming into today's game. Gets one, gets a TFL right there. Yeah, we see this St. Mary's defense sending those linebackers on the outside, trying to pinch in as Briston Wise once again <laughs> takes the handoff and tries to find some room to run. But now a long third down. Yeah, another long third down again. Um, Griffin McCracken, he can kick it, but with this wind, you got to get a lot closer. I think we're still in two down territory. Cougars looking for a positive yard. Uh-oh. Nicely done by Micah Cowan to reel that one in. It had turnover written all over it, Josiah. And he gets, well, not quite back to the line of scrimmage. Called a loss of one. Yeah, Owen Ott was able to flow right into where Micah Cohen, like you said, a great catch, that one-handed catch to bring it in. You don't want to fumble here at this spot, but now the Cougars get quickly to the line of scrimmage. Van Wert has not put the ball in the air at all yet, and they've had a great first drive, but with it being fourth and nine, they might need to look to put that pigskin in the air for the first time in the skin in this game. Wise steps back, but now he cuts through, breaks a tackle. He's going to get around the right side. He's at the 10. He's at the 5. And he's pulled out of bounds inside the 5 yard line. Number 0 Noah Dixon keeps him from reaching pay dirt, but what a great run for Briston Wise. As you said, another first down or Laudic Jewelry. Laudic Jewelry, your family owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 South Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at laudics.com. Just a great run there by the quarterback with this weather. Those arm tackles aren't going to take it. You got to wrap them up and bring them down. 15 yard gain for Wise. It's first and goal from the three. Yeah, no secret here. Wise keeps it, and it's, it's a fumble. And St. Mary's, they're saying they have it, and they do. As we said, Van Wert leads the WBL in turnovers, and what an inopportune time to put it on the turf right there. There's never a good time, but Van Wert smelling end zone, and right there, I believe Noah Dixon was on the initial hit again. And Briston Wise coughs it up. A fumble at the three-yard line. St. Mary's takes over. Uh, sometimes you see that, you know, with the runners trying to reach out, trying to get that extra yard. And as you said, number zero, Noah Dixon hit him hard, put the ball on the ground, and St. Mary's pinned back, but going back to their bread and butter. Going back to the bread and butter is exactly right. They're going up the middle, especially deep in their own territory. Nothing flashy from Bo Fry in his fourth year here at St. Mary's. They pick up five. I believe that was Mabry on the carry. They start this drive on their own two-yard line. On top, on top. Split backs. Split backs. Split back situation with Jacob Kessler. Hands off to Mabry, and he rumbles and stumbles. And he's got enough for a Lodix Jewelry first down. That's going to move the chains. 
and you would say now St. Mary's can open up the offense, but what you see is what you get. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's been a lot of Mabry early. You know, haven't seen much of Dominic Osborne yet. You know, they're leading rusher for the season, but with Mabry back, they're able to hand it off to him and gain some positive yardage. So gains of five and gains of six give them a first down, and they go behind the right side of that offensive line on first down. Pickup of two on the play, pushes the ball to the 15-yard line. Second and eight for St. Mary's. And so far we've seen Jacob Kessler at the quarterback position, but they will also run Aiden Meiderding in that position as well. And that is Aiden Meiderding right there, and he hands it off. And now he's going to go over to the sideline, get the play. Pushes the ball up to the 17-yard line. Another gain of two. So big third down here again. Van Wert can stiffen up. Definitely will force St. Mary's into a punting situation deep in their own territory. Big play here in the first quarter with two and change to play. They're going to come around the left side, and it is a nice job by the Van Wert defense as Luke Rammel tries to take that ball behind the left side of that offensive line, and he only picks up two yards and moves it to the 19. So St. Mary's, they're going to have to put the ball in the air, but they're doing it with the foot and not the arm. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, with this weather, any of these special team plays can be tricky. The last snap went a little bit high, so we'll see if St. Mary's can get a better punt. Last punt, 21 yards. Brady Triplett to kick it away. Good snap, good catch. Gets this one up in the air, but it doesn't go very far. Van Wert running away from it again. St. Mary's are going to down it. Van Wert's going to have great field position. So out of the turnover, the Van Wert defense again stiffens up. We're going to see a heavy dose of Briston Wise again coming out here for Van Wert's second drive of the game. Yeah, an unfortunate turnover there at the goal line for this Cougars team. But as you said, the defense did their job, forced the punt, was able to flip the field here. And now it's a short distance for this offense. Our scoreboard sponsor, it's Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Weiss takes the snap in the shotgun. He's going to put the ball in the air for the first time. He's got Micah Cowan wide open, and he just overthrows him, Josiah. Yeah, great play call there. Almost like a little wheel route for Micah Cohen. Found himself wide open. Just unable to make the connection there. But really the first time them going deep all night, not having the run by Briston Wise. And I'm not surprised that throw was long. He's throwing from north to south. Our wind is coming out of the east, northeast. About 90% of the Van Wert downtown district is to the east. I thought it would block the wind a little bit more, but there's just a lot of wind out there. Wise with the throw now, he connects with Cowan. And he's got enough for a first down and more. Does a nice job getting the ball down to around the 29-yard line of St. Mary's. Yeah, and that's another Laudix Jewelry first down. Has a good connection between Wise and Cohen. Able to catch the ball and get some yards after contact. Yeah, let's make that a 12-yard gain down to the 24, not the 29. So first and 10 Cougars just outside our red zone. Our thermal guard window and door red zone. And we've got a flag. Looks like we have a lineman jumping a little bit early. For St. Mary's, so it's oh, going to be yeah, okay. encroachment. Thought we had a lineman jump a little early, but must have been the defender pulling him off. Uh -huh. So that's going to move it down to the 19-yard line. Third play of the drive for the Cougars. You know, the spread offense, Van Wert, I feel like they want to they play, they want to fight like in West Side Story, the 
Sharks and the Jets. <laughs> they want to fight in an open lot and have some rumble here and a rumble there. St. Mary's, they want to fight you, but they want to do it in a phone booth. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one, you know, one of the keys they talk about. they got to win the trenches. And is this another offsides? It is, Josiah. Well, St. Mary's giving them 10 yards there. And that's an easy first down. You can't get them any better than that if you're Van Wert. That's going to move the ball down to the 14-yard line. And now we are in the Thermal Guard window and door red zone. And we appreciate their sponsorship. Briston Wise with Gary beside him, Gary, Gary Hillary. Wise goes to his left. He finds a seam, and he finds Pater. He gets into that end zone with the Cougars written down there. And Van Wert strikes first here with 15 seconds left in the first quarter. A four-play drive. Briston Wise on a 14-yard scamper. And that's our Pantry Pride touchdown. Pantry Pride means best quality meats, best value for your dollar, and best service you can count on. So Briston Wise finding some room around the edge. Great blocking up front. Able to run in for the touchdown. Wise holds and Griffin McCracken. He puts it up, and he puts it through. Griffin McCracken makes that extra point. Lee Kinsel Chevrolet GMC is our extra point sponsor. Lee Kinsel Chevrolet GMC on Irvin Road in Van Wert. Take a look at our pre-owned specials at LeeKinsel.com. You're watching WBL Football on WOSN. Cougar 7, St. Mary 0. It's first quarter action with 15 seconds remaining. Van Wert gets on the board, a 14-yard run for Briston Wise. Time of possession, 52 seconds on that drive. It was a four-play drive starting at the St. Mary's 36. The extra point was good by Griffin McCracken. So here we go again on the kickoff. Keaton Welch is going to have to put a finger on that football for Griffin McCracken. St. Mary's, see if they can answer. McCracken gets the kick away. And it gets down to Mabry, the quarterback. He's back there receiving, and he makes his way through it. And that ball goes down. Oh! It looked like Van Wert was going to have some money made right there on a turnover, but they push it out of bounds. St. Mary's is going to keep the football. Yeah, St. Mary's very lucky on that. Quarterback being flipped over there, loses possession of the ball. Luckily for them is uh, Cougars. Defender pushes it out of bounds. Would have been a big play here in this first quarter. Our officiating crew is going to get together again. William Horvath, our referee. I didn't see the yellow hanky, but I do now. Down there right on the 15-yard line, even with the numerals. Yeah, it looked like they called a block in the back there early on, right when he picked up the ball. So that will push them back even farther. St. Mary's hasn't had very good field position to start here. Yeah, they haven't had very good field position, and I, I'm sure Bo Fry is not real pleased with their execution at this point in the game. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Briston Wise. Do we have some numbers on him? Yeah, Briston Wise, as we've seen, been the main offense for this Van Wert Cougars team. 72 yards rushing here in the first quarter alone. So, you know, that's exactly what the coaching staff wants from him, doing a great job in leading this offense. Here comes the St. Mary's offense, and Mabry's going to take the handoff for Minor Ding, and he gets around the right side. He's rumbling, bumbling, stumbling, and he gets out to the 27-yard line. That's some good breathing room right there if you are St. Mary's. And that's another Laudix Jewelry first down, and that will lead us to the end of the first quarter. End of the first quarter at Van Wert High School. This beautiful facility with a turf field. And after one, Van Wert 7, Memorial 0. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Welcome back to Van Wert High School. And after one quarter, Van Wert leads 7 to 0. Briston Weiss with 72 yards on the night thus far. 
And on that last play, I, I missed that. It's Jacob Kessler, the quarterback, taking the handoff from uh, Aiden Minerding to get around that right edge for a 20-yard gain. First and 10, Memorial on their own 27. Minerding stays in. There he goes to Mabry. Mabry finds daylight on the left side. He's got a first down and more. Shoved out of bounds. Up on the 46-yard line. That's good enough for another Lodix Jewelry first down. That's a gain of 19, Josiah. Yeah, and we're seeing that offensive line start to get a little bit off of the snap there, really getting a little bit of space for these running backs. And we've got to mention there's been five different runners for St. Mary's, so they're doing a good job of spreading the ball around. With the run game, and you're right, the offensive line imposing their will. Two plays, two big chunk plays for St. Mary's. There, Vanward stiffens up a little bit, but Schmidt, Caleb Schmidt, he comes around the right side for a positive gain, and he picks up around five on that first down play, puts the ball right at midfield, called a gain of four. Split backfield, Mabry goes around the left side. There's another hole by that offensive line, and he gets pushed out of bounds by the Cougars, but it's gonna be enough for another Lodix Jewelry first down. Looks like it's gonna be right on the 35 yard line, so that's a 15 yard gain. On that left side, finding some gaps there. Mabry doing a good job of finding that hole. Yeah. A great run. And on that left side, we have left tackle Xander Post, left guard Camden Roth, and center Terry Amborski. Right up the middle behind that center, Terry Amborski. But the defensive line for Van Wert, they set up and closed shop. You know, this is a game where you work on memorizing numbers, you work on the skill guys, but the linemen on both sides of the ball, both ways, they are so important in this game, Josiah. Absolutely, and it was Javon Smith there doing a great job of clogging that middle, hitting Mabry right as he got to the line of scrimmage and knocking him back. Van Wert with six guys up on the line. Mabry goes around the left side, and he finds positive yardage. This is what St. Mary's wants, these shorter third downs, third and three coming up, knowing that they're going to go back to that run game, doing a good job of gaining some positive yards here on this drive. Two down territory, especially when you run the ball and teach your kids to fall forward. Minor dings at quarterback under center, and he goes off to the left side with the handoff. And that was Colton Mabry on the carry. And here's where the money is made. Fourth and two on the 27 yard line. It's a pitch. And Mabry gets around the left side. I think he got enough for the first down. Yeah, and you saw that there. They went heavy on the right side, bringing in a couple tight ends there, but decided to pitch to the weak side, and Mabry's able to gain those two and a half yards for another Lodix Jewelry first down. It's going to be on the 25-yard line. This is where Van Wert is in the bend, but don't break philosophy. Not in the red zone yet is St. Mary's. Heavy to the left, and they're going to go behind that heavy line, and right there... Dominic Osborne slips, and he gets knocked down for a loss as a result. Micah Cowan in on the play for Van Wert. Loss of one. Yeah, with this weather, you might start seeing some guys losing their footing, and we saw that there as Osborne was able to try to cut inside. Wasn't able to do that, and a great stop there by the Cougars' defense. In the wing tee, St. Mary's, Minerding. Coming to the right. Hands it off to Colton Mabry. And he picks up positive yardage. And that was Aaron Riker almost with the stop there at the line of scrimmage, forced him inside. But it was a good run by Mabry. 
to get a good gain on that second down. Now we have a third and three. Picks up eight on the play, down on the 18-yard line of Van Wert. We are in the thermal guard window and door red zone. Two down territory for St. Mary's. Eight and a half minutes to go in the second quarter. It's been a fast one. We anticipated that as well. Minor D gives it to Schmidt right up the middle. Van Wert ready for it, but that offensive line on that left side, they do get some push to make it fourth and very short. Yeah, no doubt here that St. Mary's will go for it on fourth and less than a yard here. Two-yard gain, another big play. See if Van Wert can stiffen up. See if St. Mary's can execute. And they get enough for the first down. I saw the four. I don't know if it was 34 or 24. I believe it was Mabry on that once again. Okay. And which side did they go again, Josiah? To that left side. Left so side. Finding a little bit of success there on that left side. But now that puts them in the thermal guard red zone. Once again, so St. Mary's trying to respond after giving up a touchdown there at the end of the first quarter. Fifth first down on the drive. This time they go around the left side to Dominic Osborne. Van Wert is there. Stretch it out. No gain on the play to speak of. Yep, going to stay right at the 13-yard line. Make it second and 10. Schmidt with the ball straight up the middle. Off that left side again. They, St. Mary's offense, they feel like they've found something. The coaching staff pounding the left side of that offensive line, the right side of that defensive line for Van Wert. Positive yardage for Schmidt. Right at the first down marker. See, it looks like they're going to call it just a little short. If we're looking at the third down marker, looks like it's about a half yard short. Yeah. Just outside the three yard line. Call it the four. That was a gain of nine. Right up the middle on the left side. And that's in there for a touchdown, a Rough Rider touchdown. Our touchdown sponsor is Pantry Pride. Pantry Pride means best quality meets best value on your dollar and best service you can count on. Did you pick up who the ball carrier was there, Josiah? Well, having a hard time. I saw the four, but I, I think it was Dominic Osborne on that run. Able to go off the left side there once again. We've, As you said, we've seen a little bit of success in that gap. And once again, able to score. So great possession there for this Rough Riders team. Triplet looking for the extra point to tie things up. It's dropped. They're going to look for two going around the left side. Nice job by Van Wert. Luke Ramo tried to take it around there, but Van Wert thwarts that. The extra point is no good. With 6.47 to go in our second quarter, we're all... Well, no, Van works ahead 7-6. to six. You're watching high school football on WOSN. We want to thank our presenting sponsor again, Wapakoneta Ford. Wapakoneta Ford, view our new and pre-owned inventory at wapakonetaford.net. St. Mary's ready to kick off. That was a 15-play drive, taking up 5 minutes and 18 seconds. They scored the TD on a four-yard run by Dominic Osborne. The extra point was no good. Van Wert leads 7-6 to six with 6.47 to go. Brady Triplett to kick off. And Van Wert fields it at their own four-yard line. And they come up the middle. Bouncing off some tacklers. And it's number two for Van Wert. That's Case Stegeman. And he's going to get the ball all the way out to the 27-yard line, I believe. And Van Wert will take over there. 6.39 to go in quarter number two. 
And now you got to answer, Josiah. If you're Van Wert, you've had a good start. You've had a good first half. St. Mary's earned that touchdown. Van Wert was bend but don't break, but St. Mary's pushed it in. But now if you're Coach Wrecker, you want to answer the bell here and keep momentum on your side. Briston Wise fakes the handoff. He goes around the right side. There's daylight. He gets it to the 35. He's at the 40. And he gets almost to midfield, and that's how you start a drive off, Josiah. Yeah, once again, able to read that. St. Mary's defense was flowing off of that fake. Briston Wise able to read that, pulls it back, runs to the right side, gains some positive yardage, and we'd like to see that as that quarterback, when he went down, holding on to that ball strong. Briston Wise with the 20-yard gain on first down. Pushes the ball, as we said, all the way to midfield. Van Wert signaling the play in right now. St. Mary's, they lead the WBL in league championships of 20, uh, 25. Van Wert is second with 19 tradition-rich programs here at Eggers Field tonight. They come around the left side, does Brisson Wise. He went right, now he's going left. He's at the 45, the 40 of St. Mary's. Gets down to the 35, another big gain for the Cougars. And Taylor Compton almost had him behind the line of scrimmage, but once again, you know, those arm tackles, when the weather is rainy, it's hard to bring him down, and Briston Wise runs through that, gets another first down, a Lodix Jewelry first down, as he continues this drive for the Cougars. It's an 18-yard gain, two chunk plays, 20 yards and 18 yards, and Van Wert finds themselves on St. Mary's side of the field, the 35-yard line, first and 10. Wise with Gary, Gary Hillary beside him. He's going to keep it again. Hillary's his lead blocker, but they've had success on the edge, not so much up the middle. We see it right there. St. Mary stuffs that one. Yeah, we saw the linebackers able to run freely right to Briston Wise, meet him at the line of scrimmage. Briston Wise able to fall forward, gain a two. Ball's marked on the 33-yard line now. St. Mary's 19 returning starters on this team. 16 senior starters, 21 on the roster. Wise keeps the ball again, goes misdirection, left side, he sees daylight. Good block out there on the edge, and he's going to be pushed out of bounds. Nate Gearhart with a great block downfield. Van Wert's got another chunk play. Josiah, they're going to have first and 10. First and 10 on the St. Mary's 13-yard line. That's another 20-yard gain. Three first downs on four plays on this drive. Well, you like to see those wide receivers out there blocking for their quarterback. And right there, as you said, Nate Gerhart able to get a good block on the edge and allow him to run. And once again, looks like another touchdown by Briston Wise. The offense has been all through him tonight, and rightfully so, runs into the end zone for another touchdown, a pantry pride where we got Pantry Pride means best quality meats, best value for your dollar, and best service you can count on. 13-yard TD run for Briston Wise. They go left, they go right, they go up the middle, they go left, they go right. They, they kept St. Mary's off balance right there, and they ran, went right down the field. Never put the ball in the air at all. Griffin McCracken in for the Lee Kinsel extra point try. It's the snap, it's the hold, and it's good. And with 4.34 to go in your second quarter, Van Wert, they answer. As St. Mary scored, Van Wert comes right back. They got the cell phone out, and they delivered. They made the call. Van Wert 14, St. Mary 6. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. We want to thank our timeout sponsor tonight. It's Critton Aerial Applications. Critton Aerial Applications provide you with custom liquid and granular crop applications, all from our innovative drone system. Videos and information on our Facebook page, Critton Aerial Applications. Check it out. That was a five-play drive. Took up two minutes and five seconds. 73 yards covered. Finished with a 13-yard run by Briston Wise. And we talk about the 
quick strike offense of Van Wert, but you usually think pass. That was all on the ground, Josiah. Yeah, and as we look at it, 24 carries for 158 yards for Briston Wise. So what an awesome half he's having here. Was still 429 to play here in this second quarter. You know, just been a one-man wrecking crew. He has, but he will share the glory with his teammates. They make the blocks. He just runs it. That was Jacob Kessler with the return and the kicker, Griffin McCracken, on the stop. St. Mary's is going to take over with 4.29 to go in the second quarter on their own 38-yard line. Here we go. Let's see what St. Mary's does now. It's around the left side, and it is none other than Dominic Osborne. You think as a defensive coordinator, you're like, well, they're running it left. We're going to stack the left side of the offense with our defense. But once you do that, then they'll pick you apart going the other way. It's just a really tough situation right now for the Van Wert D. And St. Mary's best starting position of this half, starting at the 38. And here we go. Once again, a run up the middle for number 34, Colton Mabry will be another Laudix Jewelry first down. So both teams in rhythm on offense, doing what they like to do, albeit with the exception of not throwing the ball like Van Wert will do. Uh, our weather conditions just are not conducive to that. And they have just said, we're not going to try to do that, and we're going to do what we can on the ground, and they've been successful. St. Mary's doing what St. Mary's does. Well, and you gotta see, you gotta, you know, give props to the coaching staff of Van Wert, you know, deciding that hey, you know, we're used to making those big plays in the the passing game, but now we're going to attack with Britton Wise and force St. Mary's to stop them. They haven't been able to so far. Aiden Mindering hands, Mindering hands it off, up the middle, and that's Schmidt with the carry, and he picks up four, make it second and six. They go across midfield. It's on the Van Wert. 47-yard line now. 328. You don't have to be in a hurry if you're St. Mary's, but you want to be in rhythm. Overloaded on the left side. Neiderden going to th put it up in the air. He's got a receiver out there, but good defense as well. Looking for Jacob Kessler. And defensively, number two, Case Stegeman on the coverage. Great job there. You run the ball so often, you're looking to go with the change up and catch the defense, quote unquote, sleeping. Van Wert would have none of it right there. No, and it's definitely a good time just past midfield. You know, they've been running the ball so successfully here in the past about eight minutes. So they decided to do a little play action. You know, really a good call, just unable to complete the pass. Big play here, third and six. It's tough to be in two-down territory right here, especially if Van Wert holds them to little or no gain. But here we go. Two in the backfield. We're going to come around the right side. That's Mabry, and he finds the first down and more. That's a lot of jewelry first down for Colton Mabry and just what the doctor ordered if you're a Rough Rider fan. Well, you saw the Cougars' defense set the edge, but Colton Mabry able to make that quick cut, go back to the middle, able to gain those positive yards once again for another first down. Now 2.56 to go here in the second quarter. 13-yard gain. They go with Osborne, and he's going to take it all the way into the red paint for St. Mary's. It's a touchdown for the Rough Riders, a 34-yard scamper by Dominic Osborne. And St. Mary's puts six more on the board. 14 to 12 with 2.47 to go. Went off the left side again, Josiah. And it looks like St. Mary's, they're going to go for two to try not to sing up. Yeah, early on for St. Mary's, it was all Mabry here in these last two drives. It's been all Dominic Osborne able to f attack that left side once again, find the gap and break free. Score another touchdown for this Rough Riders team and big possession here. See if they can tie the game back up. Neiderding under center. And they get in there. Was that Osborne? Or, yeah, it was Osborne because I see Mabry standing up. Dominic Osborne converts the two-point try after the touchdown. And with 2.47 to go in our second quarter, 
We got ourselves a damn day. It's 14 to 14. WBL football on WOSN. Two forty-seven to go in our first half. All knotted up at fourteen. We want to thank our instant replay sponsor for tonight's game. It is First Federal of Van Wert. Tonight's instant replay is sponsored by First Federal Bank of Van Wert. Your community, your bank. That scoring drive for St. Mary's. It was a five-play drive, taking up one minute and thirty-five seconds. The touchdown was a thirty-four-yard run by Dominic Osborne and he also went in for the two-point conversion. Triplet to kick off for St. Mary's, gets it away, pushes it down, there's Case Stegeman, he's got the ball at his own five. He's coming up through the middle, and nice defense there by the kicking team, St. Mary's, and it looks like- I believe that was Domin Caleb Turner. Yeah, and Dominic Osborne might have got nicked up a little bit right there, but Van Wert's gonna take over with 2.43, Left in the half on their own 34-yard line. This is where you want to execute, but you don't want to get flashy. You don't want to give this – you don't want to have a turnover right now. Um, if you march the ball down, if you can get it to midfield, maybe you get a little more aggressive. But right now I think you're going to see a steady dose of Briston Wise like we have all game. Well, and he's been able to gain, you know, 15 to 20 yards every time he makes that run. So – you know, you want to secure the ball here. Like you said, don't want to give St. Mary's a short field with 2.43 to go here in the second quarter. But as I can expect, allow Briston Wise to do what he does, find space and attack, make St. Mary's get a stop. Wise keeps it, comes on the left side, starts this drive on his own 11, and Wise does find some positive yardage, gets out to around the 22. It's going to be close. Yes, it is. It's going to be a first down. Gain of 11 on the play. Both teams have all of their timeouts, Josiah. Three apiece. Van Wert can get down the field a little bit more. They might think about stopping this clock and seeing if they can punch one in, but they need a couple big plays. Yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Heavy dose of Briston Wise comes around the right side. Looks like he's going to be close to the 25. We're starting to see that Riders defense flowing to everything. Briston Wise, so we'll see if they can counter that with something. See if they can get the ball quickly out of his hands or yeah. Run, yeah. run a counter, so do something to force this mm -hmm. St. Mary's defense to stay true. Going to go straight to his left, and he does spin. He's in the spin cycle right there and gets up to the 32-yard line. And that's going to make it a short third down play. Call it the 31, not the 32. Gain of six. Don't get bored with success if you're Van Wert. Just try and crunch a first down. Looks like they get it right there. And now maybe open the playbook up a little bit with 126 to go. And you have all three timeouts left, Josiah. Well, we see St. Mary's doing a little bit more prevent defense. Don't want to give up a big play here. Only sending three down linemen at a time here. So trying to make Van Wert. And once again, another good tackle meets Briston Wise at the line of scrimmage. Looks like he falls forward for one yard. So put it on the 29-yard line. Coach Recker, very, very satisfied right now just to stay conservative. They do throw it here, and we see right there number 14, Jacob Kessler. He tried to jump the route. That would have been disastrous, but instead it is a completion for the Cougars. They pick up five yards, gain of four, make it um, third down in a long five. So we've got offense on or uh, penalty on the defense again offsides. That's their third infraction of that variety, that being St. Mary's. And St. Mary's has been penalized 30 times this year for 256 yards. 
So that's going to be a Van Wert first down, and the Cougars are going to take their first time out. They're going to have first and 10 on their own 43-yard line. Our timeout sponsor, Critton Aerial Applications, provides you with custom liquid and granular crop applications, all from our innovative drone system. Videos and information on our Facebook page can be found at Critton Aerial Applications. So, Josiah, I think that's a really good timeout by the Van Wert coaching staff right there. Yeah, because, you know, 28 seconds, that's still a lot of time. You know, they've been able to, to you know, make some big plays with the feet of Briston Wise. You know, we'll see if they decide to put it in the air. You know, last time, number 14, Jacob Kessler almost <laughs> read that quick out pass that they made. But we'll see what they decide to do. Do they – you know, try to keep it in the hands of Briston Wise and be a little bit more secure with it, or do they try to make that big play happen? Our presenting sponsor tonight is Wapakoneta Ford. View our new and pre-owned inventory, WapakonetaFord.net. Or run Wise here to the strong side, but he's going to come out here looking to throw, and he does throw, and just out of the reach of Micah Cowan. Micah Cowan is the second leading receiver in the Western Buckeye lead. He has 40 receptions coming into tonight's game, uh, averages 13 yards per catch, and has four TDs. Unfortunately, right there, that one was just out of the grasp. Makes it second and 10, 23 seconds. I still like a running play around the edge for... Wise, and here it goes. They've, they've, they've had success with this play, faking the jet sweep. Wise reads it, and he does have positive yardage, and he gets out of bounds, and he's going to get a first down as well. Lottick's jewelry first down, and they have crossed midfield, and they are on the 45-yard line of St. Mary's. Make that a 12-yard gain for Briston Wise. Fourth first down of the drive. Wise, empty backfield, fakes it to Cowan, running the same play off the left side. And I think he may have another first down, and they're going to stop the clock to move the chains with 10 seconds. They need more yardage for Griffin McCracken to try a field goal attempt. They've got the two timeouts. Maybe they can look to get something to the middle of the field and see what they get. Looks like it will be just short of the first down. Okay, second, and, second one. and one. So a good timeout by the Cougars coaching staff is knowing that the time would continue to run off. But, yeah, you know, about 40 yard, 35 yards out, you know, could be a quick out to see if they can get just a little bit closer, get out of bounds if possible. Do you think they'll take a, a kick here and – this weather? <laughs> I know. That's the other thing. It's it just the, the conditions are not conducive. But here's the thing. Van Wert will get the kickoff in the second half, I believe. St. Mary's kickoff notes. Uh, St. Mary's will receive. So Van Wert, they have had a nice drive here, if nothing else, to keep momentum on their side of the ledger, even though the uh, score is tied right now. They've had a really nice drive to finish out the half. Briston Wise, this first half, it's been his playground for the Van Wert offense. We've all just been privileged to watch it. He goes to the corner, uh, to the flat out there to Micah Cowan, picks up positive yardage, gets the first down, but we're down to five seconds. So maybe now you throw one to the end zone. Yeah, and that is another Laudix Drury first down. Got that quick little out there to stop the clock. As you said, one last opportunity to try to maybe just throw it up and see what happens. It looks like we have a timeout once again. So Vanward's going to take a timeout. We'll take one as well. Five seconds remaining in our second quarter. We'll come back and see if we get a Hail Mary. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Welcome back to Eggers Stadium. Five seconds remaining in our second quarter. Van Wert with one play, barring a defensive penalty, one play left. And we talked about the returning starters for St. Mary's. Van Wert, they have nine seniors starter, starting. They only returned one starter this year. Weiss takes it back. He's going to look down the field. He's got time, finds it's intercepted as he tried to go over the middle. And that's intercepted by number 48 for St. Mary's, Ryan Revolt. And that's going to end our first half. It's been a good old good one. We're tied up at 14. 
excellent WBL football, and I'm excited. We've got a whole other half, Josiah, and we'll be back to talk about halftime adjustments and get our second half started. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Welcome back to Edgar Stadium for second half action. We got ourselves a good old good one. Van Wert 14, St. Mary's 14. I'm Dave Bowen, and on our color tonight is Josiah Stober and doing stats, Brad Hughes. Josiah, what are the numbers here quickly before our second half gets started? Yeah, as we look at the visiting St. Mary's Rough Riders, uh, as expected, all on the ground, 209 yards uh, number 34, Colton Mabry, has 107 of those yards on 12 carries. Uh, Caleb Schmidt, number 38, has 27 yards on 7 carries. And Dominic Osborne has 53 yards on 7 carries for that total of 209 yards. They are 1 of 2 in the passing game for 0 yards. Um, they do have 5 penalties for 35 yards, but no turnovers. For the home team, Van Wert rushing. It's been all Briston Wise. 202 yards there in that first half at the quarterback position. Two touchdowns. Micah Cohen has been the leading receiver uh, for them. Has seven yards on two receptions there. Uh, total passing, 21 yards. Um, they do have two turnovers there in the first half. An interception at the end of the half there. And then also a fumble at the goal line. But they do have a total of 230 yards on the night. Nicely done. Triplet kicks off. Stegeman fields that, his own, fields that at his own four-yard line, and he's going to get back close to the 20-yard line where Van Wert will take over. Time of possession as well from that first half. St. Mary's had it for around 10 minutes and 18 seconds. Van Wert, 12 minutes and 15 seconds. That was not on my bingo card. St. Mary's a team that likes to possess the football. Van Wert has had the ball longer in the first half, and that is another reason why we're all knotted up at 14. Yeah, as a look at just maybe some quick changes there. You know, as coaches met with their teams at half, trying to get some halftime adjustments as we look for the St. Mary's team. Got to figure out a way to, to stop Briston Wise. As we said, 209 yards. And once again, he's there with the ball. And a great stop there by the Rough Riders defense. And that was number 44, which was Owen Ott. There's your adjustment, your halftime adjustment in play, Josiah, as the whole St. Mary's defense said, we're only going to look for one guy, and it's number 17 on his jersey. That's going to be a loss of six on the play. Make it second down and 15 to go. Once again, another great stop there by the Rough Riders defense. You saw there a little bit, I think, we talked about it at halftime, those defensive ends really trying to pinch in to not allow any of those running lanes for Briston Wise and two stops, two losses in a row for this Rough Riders defense. So St. Mary's was out early after halftime, and I think the uh, halftime discussion was quick and succinct because they are coming out with some passion here on defense this first drive. Wise, empty backfield. Takes a snap off the shotgun and goes to his right. And it looks like that, yes, that is completed. And it's right at the first down marker. And is Van Wert going to get a Lodix first down on that or not, Josiah? Looks like the official, I believe we're going to have to have a measurement here. It's a 15-yard pass completion. It's right at the sticks. They're giving it a good hard look. And they're going to call first down. So Van Wert with a great pass play. I believe that was to Micah Cowan out there on the right side. First and 10, Van Wert on their own 29-yard line. Again, Wise, empty backfield. Micah Cowan in motion. The Jets sweep. They fake it. And they try to run that play that they had so much success in the first half. But St. Mary's makes the adjustment. And Briston Wise, he's gotten up gingerly here a couple times, doing so right here on this play. And Van Wert can ill afford to have him have to leave this ballgame. 
Well, that defense there met at the ball. The ball, holding the ball was Briston wise. So as you said, getting up a little bit slowly there on that last possession, you know, this Cougars team have to keep him healthy. He's the engine that keeps this offense running. Once again here, they does hand off. One of the first handoffs of the night. And a good call by the Van Wert offense as Gary Hillary takes that handoff. And that gives Wise a chance to catch his breath. And it's a positive gain. It moves the ball up to the 34-yard line. That is a gain of seven. Make it third and five. Man, Van Wert didn't have to do that in the first half because Wise was able to run wherever he wanted to. But we'll see these adjustments come into play as they have to find a way to get somebody else involved. Yeah, I think the uh, St. Mary's coaching staff, they put a big 17 on the whiteboard at halftime and said, that's the guy who has the ball. Find him. He keeps it this time, goes off the left side. It's there this time. He's going to be close to a first down, but great pursuit by number 48. That's Ryan Revolt for St. Mary's, and he's going to be just short, I believe, and this is a big call for Van Wert and Coach Recker, and it looks like they're going to go for it, and I understand. I know you're in your own territory, Josiah, but maintaining possession of the football is huge in this game. Well, it looks like we may have another measurement here. I don't know if the officials are going to give them. It does. They're going to bring out the chains. To see how close this ball is to the first down. You know, we've got a pretty good view here. It looks like it might be just a little short. It's all about angles. I still say one of these days they're going to come out with laser pointer um, sticks, and we won't have a yeah. chain anymore. And it is short. And it looks like uh, about three inches, three and a half inches, I think, is what it is, Josiah, with yeah, my eagle eyes from yep, up here. Officially three and a half inches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, high school football, you got to love it. And we are just excited to be a small part of it and hope you are enjoying this game. It's a great one between, again, these two tradition-rich programs, St. Mary's and Van Wert. You look on paper coming into this game, St. Mary's 3-2, and 2-2, two, two and two. Van Wert 1-4, and 0-4. Oh Van Wert's only scored 14 points in the last three games per game. On paper, leading rushing team in the WBL, St. Mary's uh, last place rushing defense, Van Wert. It all pointed to maybe a two or three touchdown victory for St. Mary's, but there's a reason why we're out here on Friday night and the weather's not the greatest, but the people who are in the stadium are enjoying an outstanding effort being put forth by the players on both sides of the football. Van Wert comes out quickly. Wise in the shotgun. Gary Hillary beside him. Wise is going to keep it. Go to the right side. He's got the first down. Yeah, just a smart run there by Briston Wise. Didn't take off, wanted to see where that gap was. Was able to jump over his lineman to gain that first down, that Lodex Jewelry first down. So what a great play there as the Cougars keep this drive alive. Yeah, um, from the broadcasting point of view, you, you, you're right. He was smart. He made a decision and then found the open hole and got it. If he wouldn't have gotten the first down, we'd be saying, well, he hesitated and it cost him. <laughs> but anyway, it's first down for the Cougars. And they fake the jet sweep to Cowan. And there it is again. Nothing for Briston Wise on the first down play. Loses one. That pushes it back to the 40, and I just can't reiterate enough uh, the adjustment that St. Mary's has made defensively. Yeah, what we saw it there is we had five guys really close that pocket down. There wasn't any gaps for him to run through. And they were able to tackle him for a one-yard loss. And the wind coming out of the east, north, northeast. It's 66 degrees out there. That's the good thing, but the 20-mile-per-hour wind – Coupled with the rain makes it tough to execute the throwing game. And we see Weiss keep it. He goes around the right side. He's picking up positive yardage. And he's going to make it a short third down play as he gets the ball up to the 48-yard line. That's a gain of eight. So third and manageable for the Cougars. Good play. Yeah, I was able to get outside. Have, hasn't found a whole lot of running lanes here in the second half, but was able to get outside. Big 
pickup there. Now it's a very manageable third down. Always trying to theorize a little bit. Third and short. You went on it fourth and short. Is this two down territory still on your side of the 50? Wise does give the ball. I believe that's Gary Hillary, and he doesn't pick up much, if anything, as he tries to go up the middle. It's fourth and three. Again, decision time for Coach Wrecker and the Van Wert Cougars. Hillary picks up one on the play, make it fourth and a long two. What do you think of Josiah? Yeah, well, I think they're going to go for it here with, you know, with the success Briston Wise has had so far tonight. you got to put it in your athlete's hand. I believe they're going to go. They, I can't imagine him not having the ball yep, here. Going to go to the right side. St. Mary sees him, but he just powers through. It's going to be close. They filled the gap, but then Briston Wise did a little shake it and bacon to get close to the sticks. William Horvath, our referee, giving it a hard look. It's a big call. They're going to bring the chains in. And once again, bringing in the chains here. Hard from our angle to see what it looks like here as they pull. It looks like he's short. Yeah, the Van Wert offense was coming off the field before they put the sticks down. St. Mary's celebrating. They hold the, the Cougars, and that is an 11-play drive that stops on the St. Mary's side of the 50. Outstanding drive for the Cougars, but they turn it over on down, so it'll be first and 10. And this is where St. Mary's, they want to impose their will now, being the leading rushing team in the WBL. Van Wert's got to stiffen on defense. They go with their running game as expected. Mabry on the carry, going where else? But the left side of his offensive line. Again, the left side anchored by 77, Xander Post, and number 60, Camden Roth. They are your left tackle and left guard, respectively. Staying on the left side, this time it is Dominic Osborne. Yeah, St. Mary's had a lot of success going to that left side in the first half, as you see, continuing to go behind those strong guard and tackle on that side, as you mentioned. But Van Wert having an opportunity here along third and four to see if they can respond and get a stop here and get their offense back on the field. Big play for the Cougar defense. Nidering. And he goes to the left side, and it is rumbling and bumbling and stumbling. It is number 24, Dominic Osborne. And he gets the first down and a whole lot more of green real estate. Going to push it into the red zone. It's going to be first and goal for the Rough Riders. And they are in our thermal guard windows and door red zone, as you mentioned. And way to keep his balance and stay up. Almost looked like he was going to fall down, but might have got a little help from his offensive lineman to keep him up and a great run. 38-yard gain. And it is... I believe that was Osborne again going off the left Mabry, side. I think was going it Mabry? To the left 34, side. yep. Colton Mabry. Nice run out of that wing T offense. I can't tell which running back has it up here. How do you feel that defense feels for Van Wert? <laughs> Takes it down to the four, a gain of three. Make it second and goal from the four in the thermal guard window and door red zone. Thirty-four with the carry, and he is close, if not in. I don't think he is going to reach pay dirt on that carry, but Colton Mabry is about as close as you can get inside the one-yard line. That's a three-yard gain. Yep, and once again, last two running plays on that left side, running at that B gap, continue to pound that ball in, so about a yard out. Could be a big running play or a big stop here for this Cougars defense. Look for them to go left again. They do. 
And Van Wert stiffens, but I don't think they were able to keep him out of the end zone. They don't. That's Colton Mabry with the one-yard touchdown run. Colton Mabry scores for St. Mary's, again, going off the left side of that offensive line. Yeah, and our touchdown sponsor is Pantry Pride. Pantry Pride means best quality meats, best value for your dollar, and best service you can count on. So St. Mary's responded after that big fourth down stop, able to take the ball right down and score it. Big possession there for this Rough Riders team. Keaton Fishbach, your snapper. Luke Rammel, your holder. Brady Triplett, your kicker. And he toes it and throws it, and it's right through the uprights. And with 4.02 to go in your third quarter, St. Mary's takes its first lead of the game, 21-14. WBL football on WOSN. We want to thank... Our first down sponsor, Lodix Jewelry. Lodix Jewelry, your family-owned and operated jeweler for over 70 years. Visit them at 1244 Shannon Street in Van Wert or online at Lodix.com. Triplet with the kickoff. And that one's going to go in the end zone. Gets that wind of his, at his back. And there's no return for Van Wert. That was a six-play scoring drive for the Rough Riders. Took two minutes and 43 seconds to execute. Finished with Mabry, a one-yard scamper into the end zone, a dive into the end zone, and the extra point was good by Brady Triplett. So it's going to be Van Wert football, uh, Josiah, and um, we've seen some adjustments. What else do you think we need to see on this drive from Van Wert and moving forward? Well, we saw Van Wert continue to try to run the ball with Briston Wise, but we saw a few counters there which we didn't see in the first half. But once again, Briston Wise with that run and, you know, not getting impatient, trying to force St. Mary's to stop them before they try to open up that, that air game that we know that they have. So just got to continue to be patient, see what St. Mary's defense gives them, and then continue to attack that with the counter. Cameron Dammeyer with the stop. Again, the leading tackler for St. Mary's. He met... He met Wise right there after a two-yard gain and said, it's nice to get you in here between the tackles. It's a challenge when you get outside, but you got you to keep the defense honest, and that's what Van Wert's doing right there with that running play. Now let's see if they look to go out into the flats with a pass or get around the edge. Wise getting the play called into him via the signals. Gary Hillary beside him. Two to the bottom, one to the top. This time, Hillary gets the football and no gain. St. Mary's, the defense, stepping up to the occasion here in the third quarter. And it looks like we might have a Cougar down. We're going to have a timeout on the field. We'll take one as well. It's high school football on WOSN. Welcome back to WBL football at Eggers Stadium, Van Wert, Ohio. Our injured player for Van Wert is number 50, Aiden Munson, but it's good to see him walk off the field under his own power. It's going to be third and ten for the Cougars. Well, as we talked about, St. Mary's has made some adjustments here coming out of the uh, halftime. Briston Wise in that first half, 209, 207 yards, or 202, I'm sorry, this set, the second half has had nine rushes, only nine oh. rushing yards as he missed his intended receiver, number one. Uh, Brist Briston Wise, empty backfield there. Goes to number one, Keaton Welch, the 5'10", 160-pound sophomore. He was open over the middle. Again, wet football, couldn't reel it in. And we're going to see what I believe is Van Wert's first punt of the night. Fourth and ten. They've been a efficient on offense in the adjustments St. Mary's has made. As you said, nine carries, nine yards for Briston Weiss here in the second half after 202 in the first. Van Wert's got to punt it away. Your punter's Cam Wirtz, 
He takes a snap, gets it away, and it's uh, going to go off the left side of his foot, and St. Mary's is going to have really good field position. As that one didn't quite get back to the first down to the, to the sticks, it's going to be St. Mary's football on the Van Wert 29-yard line, 2.41 to go in our third quarter. Just like last week, Van Wert had a very good first half against Wapak, trailing 14-7. to They gave up three touchdowns in the third quarter to Wapak. And again, Wapak leading the WBL right now, undefeated. St. Mary's looking to put their second TD on the board here, deep in Van Wert um, field, field position. And first and 10, and your ball carrier, number 24, that's Dominic Osborne. Osborne picks up seven yards on the play. Going to be down on the 22-yard line of Van Wert. Just outside of the thermal guard window and door red zone. Nattering, he gives it to Schmidt this time, and he's going to be close to a first down. Minerding with the handoff to Caleb Schmidt. Two juniors, they're both going to be back. Again, we've seen Jacob Kessler start, and he did start tonight, but the brunt of the quarterbacking tonight has been by number 17, Aiden Minerding for St. Mary's. Third and short. Minerding takes the snap, and he hands it off again to Dominic Osborne, and he's going to get that first down for St. Mary's, and he is in the Thermal Guard window and door red zone. Quality windows and doors from a local company you can trust. Visit thermalguardwindows.com or call 419-229-4273 for your free estimate. I'd be interested to see how many times they ran to the left side, <laughs> you know, because three plays in a row, it's all been that same run, same gap attacking the ball. They're just moving those tight ends from one side to the other, but continue to attack that left side. There they go to the right, and it's Dominic Osborne. And it's not like it was on cue to trick you up as an <laughs> announcer. It's just that you got to go right once in a while. Yeah. Uh, they've gone left so successfully. But Coach Bo Fry. Running the ball is what we do, and I, I mentioned it in the first half. Don't get bored with success. If they can't stop it, don't change it, and they've had good ball security, and right now they have a big drive here to go up two touchdowns down just outside the 15-yard line. That was a gain of three. Make it second and seven. Now they're going to go to the left, and that is Noah Dixon with the carry. The 6'1", 170-pound senior. We haven't seen him in the backfield tonight, but he gets the carry there, and he picks up positive yardage. That ball is down right at the 10. That's a gain of five. Makes it third and two. And we've got just five seconds left here in the third quarter, and St. Mary's is saying, we're going to let it run out, and that is the end of three. Your score... St. Mary's 21, Van Wert 14. Outstanding high school football on WOSN. We want to thank Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken for being our scoreboard sponsor this evening. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, where homestyle happens here. Josiah, I've hit Lee's at Lima, Wapak, and Delphus. I got to tell our St. Mary's fans, I'm, unfortunately, I haven't been to St. Mary's. I got to get there. <laughs> Great chicken at Lee's Famous Recipe. And there's St. Mary's going off the right side. And that is none other than Dominic Osborne, and he gets the ball all the way down to what appears to be the one-yard line. Good enough for a first down. That was a nine-yard gain. And it appears it's just going to be a matter of time before St. Mary's punches this one in from the one. If you're Van Wert, you've got to 
look to tackle and look to strip. Yeah, absolutely. You think they might throw the ball here? No. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> They're in the wing tee. Quarterback sneak. And we don't see a signal yet. And now we do. Aiden Minerding from one yard out with 11.20 to go in our fourth quarter. Six on the board for St. Mary's. Our touchdown sponsor, Pantry Pride. Pantry Pride means best quality meets, best value for your dollar, and best service you can count on. 27-14, and we have Bradley, Brady Triplett to set up for the extra point to put St. Mary's up by two scores. The snap, the hold, the kick, and it splits the uprights. 11.20 to go, and that extra point is sponsored by Lee Kinsel Chevrolet GMC. That makes our score St. Mary's 28, Van Wert 14. We'll be back after these. That scoring drive for St. Mary's seven plays. It was a 71-yard drive, taking up two minutes and 30 seconds, and it was finished off by a one-yard touchdown run by Aiden Minerding. Triplets kick, and it's caught, but unfortunately, Micah Cowan puts his knee on the ground. You got to make sure you catch it. I get it, but he puts his knee on the ground. It's going to be Van Wert ball deep in their own territory. Yeah, just looking at a few stats here from that third quarter. For St. Mary's, 68 yards rushing as they scored seven points there in that third quarter. For Van Wert, only 26 total yards in that third quarter, 16 rushing yards, 10 passing yards. And that's why we see the two-score lead now by St. Mary's. Van Wert, they need to answer. First and 10 on their own seven, Briston Wise. Oh, my. Number 93, and it's a fumble as well, and St. Mary's is claiming they have it, and they do. With the effort right there, Caleb Turner meets ball carrier quarterback and ball at the same point, and as a result, the fumble occurs. St. Mary's with the ball on the Van Wert two-yard line looking to blow this thing open in the third quarter. Well, just the timing of that <laughs> impact. Didn't have any time to even decide whether to hand it off or keep it. There was contact made right away. Knocked both the quarterback and the running back out. A great play for this Rough Riders. And as you said, a time to just almost put the nail in the coffin here. And it looks like they do it. Minerding hands it off to, I believe that was Dominic Osborne. And that is a Van Wert, or excuse me, a St. Mary's touchdown as he crosses into the promised land football style to make your score with 11.03-34 to 14. Time for our Lee Kinsel Chevrolet GMC extra point. And it is Brady Triplett. He's been perfect on the night in these wet conditions. The snap, the hold, the kick, and he splits the uprights again with 11.03 to play in our final canto, St. Mary's 35, Van Wert 14. So St. Mary's scores immediately off of the turnover. It's a one-play drive, two yards, Dominic Orsbon. It is a five-second drive, and they have scored two touchdowns in what, Josiah? 17, 17 sec seconds. 17 yeah. seconds. Van Wert on the return. They find a crease, and they push the ball up to really good field position on their own 37-yard line, and that was Case Stegeman. So Van Wert's going to take over. 10.57 to go. Well, now this forces Van Wert to really open up that offense, see if they can score quickly here. You know, the weather still 
pretty rough out there, w rainy, blowing. But as we see here, coming out for the pass is incomplete. Wise rolls out to his right, looking for Micah Cowan, and just overthrows him a, a little bit right there, make it second and ten. Tough throw on the run like that with the pursuit coming. And you're right, you do have to open up the playbook a little bit, but you got to stay with what you do as well because uh, St. Mary's will make you pay if you really get out of character. Wise, empty backfield, three triplets, tri trips at the bottom, and he does go to his intended receiver, Keaton Welch, and he drops that one. That's going to make it third and ten, and I think we're going to see why we haven't seen many passes tonight because the conditions just – so challenging, that wet football goes right through Welch's hands. Yeah, we even saw it coming out. It was a little bit, you know, it wasn't probably as crisp as he had hoped coming out of his hands, and that's just, you know, the weather we're playing in, the wind's still blowing pretty hard, and it's still rain coming down, so, you know, it makes it difficult for these a passing quarterback. Wise goes to his right, and it is deflected. And it was number 12, that was Luke Borns breaks that one up and makes it fourth and ten. So three incompletions in a row, and Van Wert's going to have to punt the football away. Such a great first half, and this things have, have unwound a little bit, unraveled for Van Wert in the third quarter. It's sort of like Christmas morning. You get that great electronic gift, and then you realize you've got to have batteries for it, and you don't have the batteries. <laughs> and, and that's what's happened to Van Wert here in the third quarter, in the first half of the fourth quarter. Punts away, and nice coverage there by Van Wert, but we do have a flag. I wonder if that's going to be on Aaron Reichert for being too close to the receiver. Yeah, I believe it's just a marker there by the official. Oh, just the marker. a marker. Yeah, okay, it. I missed it. So St. Mary's is going to take over on their own 32-yard line, if I see it correctly. With 10.33 to go in our ball game. St. Mary's, yeah, they'll, they'll take a score, but they're going to be happy to munch clock here. Wing T in full effect. And that's Caleb Schmidt. He is able to fend off the tacklers to pick up a real nice gain. He's tackled by Kyle Eggleston, but not before he picks up approximately six yards, make it second and four, and it is now on the 38-yard line. Yeah, it looked like that Cougars defense having him bottle up for a two-yard gain, but he's able to spin out of those arm tackles and create a positive gain for this Rough Riders team. And as you said, they'll be happy to just run off six, seven, eight minutes of this clock, getting four or five yards a carry. Only two in the backfield that time, and it's handed off to Colton Mabry. And he's got enough for a St. Mary's first down. Going to move the chains. It's going to be on their own 43-yard line. That's a pickup of five. First down, Rough Riders. Again, we talked about returning players, returning starters. Van Wert with one. Um, St. Mary's with 19 returning starters. That's where that consistency that, that Van Wert is striving to achieve, and we see it tonight. Very good first half, but just challenged here in the second half. The adjustments made. They'll find that consistency as these kids continue to gain experience. Minor Dean hands it off to Osborne, and he picks up positive yardage. Now you're back to where Van Wert's got to get a – a stop at the line of scrimmage on first down because they've got to get St. Mary's behind the chains. That's a pickup of four. Pushes the ball to the 47-yard line. And as we said, St. Mary's is going to be content with a four-yard run every time yeah. and just eat the clock up. Well, we see that here now. Even typically St. Mary's gets the play call in, gets to the line quickly, runs the ball quickly. We saw in that last play, taking their time, running some of those extra valuable seconds off of the clock here as we look like might have been a false start, not called by the official, but St. Mary's is able to get it outside and good tackle there. Micah Cowan on the stop for little to no gain. That was Colton Mabry with the 
carry. But we do see a flag now on the field. If I'm correct, is that right in the middle? I see that right above the W, the middle of the W. Our referee, William Horvath, he's got it in his hand now. Do we have a holding? No. We're going to pick it up. Okay. So third and six, and Van Wert gets the stop at the line of scrimmage on the second down. They're going to have to do it again, Josiah, and they may have to do it for two downs. Yep. Got to make it a tough call for St. Mary's whether to go on fourth down. Wing T, look like they're trying to draw Van Wert off. Not going to happen. They snap it. Coming around the left side. And that's number 24, Dominic Osborne. Picks up positive yardage. He was tripped up, I believe, by. I think it was. Cohen, I believe. Yes. Uh-huh. So first and 10, though, gets it across midfield. It is on the 45-yard line of Van Wert. That is an eight-yard gain, and the clock continues to run. Seven minutes, 15 seconds. Our play clocks aren't working tonight. I think the weather has something to do with that. But we haven't had a delay of game call on either team. So you're so used to that in high school football now, electronic play clock, clocks, but the uh, player's got to look at the official. Right up the middle, Schmidt gets it, and he's going to go all the way down the field into the end zone. A 45-yard scamper by Caleb Schmidt for St. Mary's, and that pushes our score to 41-14 with 6.51 to play. And that's another Pantry Pride touchdown. Pantry Pride means best quality meats, best value for your dollar, and best service you can count on. And as you said, Caleb Schmidt got through the linebackers before anybody knew who had the ball. And by that time, he was off to the races and puts another six on the board for the Rough Riders. Brady Triplett with our Lee Kinsel extra point attempt. And all he's done all night is put it right above the standard of the field goal post. And that's good. With 6.51 to go in the game, St. Mary's 42, Van Wert 14. It's high school football on WOSN. We want to thank our presenting sponsor for tonight's contest. It's Wapakoneta Ford. View Wapakoneta Ford's new and pre-owned inventory at wapakonetaford.net or visit us at 613-613 North Dixie Highway in Wapakoneta. There's our kickoff, and I believe that's Cowan bringing it up through the middle. Finds a little bit of a crease, and I think the ball's in the air again. Fumble. And it's picked up by St. Mary's, and they're going around the right side. It's number 32 for St. Mary's. That's Ryan Wallace. And he takes it all the way for a Rough Rider touchdown in what was a very competitive game at halftime in the early part of a third quarter has just fallen apart for the Cougars. They've had turnovers in the second half. They've had St. Mary's stiffen up the defense on Briston Wise. And as a result, St. Mary's has put... Oh, I'm, I was an English teacher. How many points is that? 32, 34 right points now. with a chance for 35. 35 unanswered points if Triplett makes this extra point. And he does. 35 unanswered points for St. Mary's in the second half. 6.15 to play. Your score, St. Mary's 49, Van Wert 14. We want to give credit where credit is due. That St. Mary's touchdown on the fumble recovery. That was by Taylor Compton, number 32 for St. Mary's. So Brady Triplett set to kick off. And this ball is fielded on the bounce. Here comes Micah Cowan, and he gets up to around the 25-yard line. That's where Van Wert will 
set up first down with 5.50 to go, and we are in a running clock situation now. And Van Wert will have the ball specifically on their own 26-yard line. You know, that, that fumble by Cowan on the preceding kickoff, he's just trying to make a play. Again, you can't flaunt the effort, the desire, the determination of these Van Wert Cougars, but that's when sometimes things happen when you try to overextend and Case Stegeman with the carry right there, and he's met at the line of scrimmage. It's just like it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. The harder you try, the more mistakes that occur of a physical nature that are somewhat out of your control. Yeah, and it's really been those turnovers here in this second half that have led to some quick scores by St. Mary's, you know, just 36 seconds in between the two scores previously. So, you know, those turnovers, as we mentioned, for Van Wert have really been their crutch all year, you know, leading the league in turnovers, and it's really, you know, bit them today and allowed St. Mary's to just dominate the second half. Case Stegeman with the carry gets the ball up to his own 36-yard line. That's a gain of eight on the play. Third and short. Coming around the left side, or the right side, excuse me, Stegeman again. And he's going to get back close to the line of scrimmage. See where they mark he does, this one. Yep. yep. He picks up enough for a first down. And that is another Laudix Jewelry first down for this Cougars team. Stegeman doing a good job here on this possession. Opportunity for a couple runs here. Able to extend this possession for the Cougars. Extend this possession, and again, this is where if you're Coach Racker and the Van Wert uh, coaching staff, you want to see your kids continue to compete, and thus far we're seeing exactly that. Stegeman goes off the left side, picks up positive yardage, gets across the 40. We'll call it the 41. So that's a gain of five. Make it four. Injured player going off the field for St. Mary's, Robert Williams, number 97. And Stegeman again, comes around the right side. He's got some green, a little bit of green, hit right at the 35-yard line. But Case Stegeman coming in on this drive and running with passion and determination. Yeah, Ball like is on the 45-yard line. I like to see at the end him, you know, really putting his shoulder down, trying to gain those couple extra yards. Leads a short third down, and I believe looks like they may have got another first down here. Yeah, that's number 21 for Van Wert, Brendan Mendoza, and that's going to move the chains. Takes it up to the 48-yard line, a gain of three, first and 10, Van Wert. That's a Lodix Jewelry first down. Again, staying with the run game. And that is Mendoza again. Two minutes remaining in our contest. Pickup of one. Always churning, always looking to be positive. Gain positive yardage here. What's going to be a St. Mary's victory, but they had to earn it. Halftime adjustments as Mendoza takes that carry for Van Wert as well and gets to the St. Mary's side of the 50. This ball is on the 47, four-yard gain. Good effort there again. Gets close to the 45. We'll have a fourth down here, about fourth and two Van, for the Cougars. Yep, yep. And they'll keep. They'll, they'll run it. They're not going to punt it here. See if he can just keep working on 
Fundamentals here with 50 seconds remaining in our contest. So, uh, Josiah, again, a game that we really saw a lot of good things in the first half by both squads, and it looks like Mendoza is not going to get to the first down marker, and St. Mary's is going to take over on downs. But the second half, we saw St. Mary's um, blow their neck up a little bit and show who they are and just have a don dominating second half. Yeah, well, it started off in that third quarter uh, really stopping Briston Wise. You know, he had 202 yards in that first half, but in that third quarter only had nine yards. So those adjustments at halftime really limited his uh, playmaking ability here in this second half and them being able to stop and then some turnovers by the Cougars team really limited you know what they could do and and St. Mary's you got to give them credit as they capitalized on those turnovers and they did it quickly to blow this game out. So St. Mary's they come away with a 49 to 14 win again when you see it on your social media or in the newspaper you're going to think a domination by St. Mary's that was not the case at all Van Wert with an outstanding effort in this football game in especially the first half and we want to thank Van Wert Athletic Director Trent Temple uh, for hosting us here at Eggers Stadium I want to thank the crew Zach Keith and Nick Fraley on the cameras, and Nick Fraley will take this back and edit it. And Josiah, I want to thank you. It's been a pleasure working with you this evening. And with the loss, Van Wert drops to 1 and 5, 0 oh and 5 in WBL action. St. Mary's, they improved to 4 and 2 overall, 2 and 2 in the Western Buckeye League. For Josiah Stover, Stover I'm Dave Bowen. And until next time, may all of your Hail Marys do nothing but fall in the hands of their intended receivers. So long, everybody.